Welcome to the London Free Press Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Gilbert. A killer has been caught after a three-year manhunt and is finally due to be sentenced eight years after the death of Londoner Mark McCullough, who was shot in his East London driveway. So today I'm speaking with reporter James Sims about the drawn-out case and how McCullough's family is feeling and what the next steps are for justice. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hi, Rachel. I'm fine. How are you doing? Good, good. This case is so strange only because it's been such a long, drawn-out um, thing. But the shooting happened in East London March 19th, 2015. So can you just walk us through what happened that day? Well, I will tell you it was a strange case right off the hop, if I may if I may say so. It, this was a, a situation on English Street where Mark McCullough, a 36-year-old guy, he lived with his with his partner, Mary Willer, and they had also had a roommate. Um, they were recovering drug addicts. They were very open. Mary was very open about that with uh, my colleague Brandon during the um, uh, at the time of of the uh, of of the homicide. Mm. Uh, but he had just walked outside his his door and took uh, came off the porch with the garbage, and he was ambushed by a couple of guys. One of them had a had a gun. The, um, the agreed statement of facts at the guilty plea for Mr. Fajir, who we're going to speak about, Ali mm-hmm. Fajir, uh, said that the, gun, that the gun went off accidentally. Um, after that, uh, that happened and Mr. McCullough had been shot, the two men went into the house uh, where they held a gun to Ms. Willer's head and they demanded money. They said, where's the money? Um, there was no money. There was nothing there. there right. they, they had, she offered them some pot. And that's okay. all they had. Uh, they left empty handed. There was a, a waiting getaway pickup truck and um, they took off and there was no reason for this to happen. There was this this investigation went on for a very, very long time. There were mm-hmm. witnesses who saw the truck. Um, police uh, did a, a thorough investigation that required them to get a whole bunch of search warrants for uh, cell phone uh, communications and uh, ultimately it was august 2017 that i think two people were were arrested not mr fajir but the getaway driver and another man the the other man the charges were withdrawn against them because there just was not enough evidence mm. and mr fajir and uh, uh um, and the co-accused the getaway driver uh, mr atkinson stephen atkinson i believe <laughs> ended up uh, pleading guilty and i believe that those guilty pleas were in uh uh, November of 2019. Okay. Mr. Fajir is Ali Fajir. But still four is, years later. Well, it took a long time to arrest them. Uh, right. Mr. Fajir was not arrested until uh, January, I believe, of 2019. So it was almost four years mm-hmm. after after Mr. Mc, McCullough died. So right. this was a really long, lengthy uh, um, investigation uh, that led to, to the arrests and ultimately to the guilty pleas. And at the time of the guilty pleas, I think everybody was was relieved that this had finally made it to, to trial and it was, being, yeah. it was being dealt with. I can imagine. Do we know why um, Mark McCullough was ambushed in the first place? They were they were looking for money, but did they have the right person? Was this the, the person they were looking for? Were they were it seems to me they were waiting for him to come outside. Well, you know what? It's it's it, it's never been completely clear what happened here, but mm-hmm. it appears to be just a very random act that it could be that they had the wrong place. It could be, you know, there, there's no connection between Mr. McCullough and these men. Right. It was very random. And did that not I, come out because there was a guilty plea? So we, did, we didn't have to discuss that? Well, you know, when, when, there, when there are plea bargains, which yeah. this was, uh, because Mr. Mr. Fajir pled guilty to manslaughter, he had been charged with murder, but he was he he pled to manslaughter, which is a lesser but included offense. Mm-hmm. Um, there is, you know, there's bargains that go on between the crown and the defense, and that includes what facts go in uh, and what facts support. You have to put in facts that support the plea, um, but there does not appear to be any connection whatsoever between these guys. And Mr. McC- McCullough and and Ms. Willer. Wow. So that that made this case particularly troubling mm-hmm. for the entire community. And when it wasn't solved for so long. Sure. So 
Yeah. Mr. McCullough was actually alive for a while. He was shot. The bullet went right through him and out the other side. Yes. But he was able to tell his partner, Mary, that he had been shot. He was able to go inside, look, start looking for bandages and died later in hospital. Yeah, he was he was he was greatly injured. I mean, wow. uh, they she called 911 and mm -hmm. and they took him to hospital and he he died there. I mean, they, this was a this was a bullet wound to the uh, chest and uh, it was. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. not survivable. Why did the investigation, why did the police investigation take so long? You touched on this a little bit, but it, three years to arrest the, the first people, it seems like a very long time. Well, again, I, there is, I, I think, you know, police, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming here, but police investigations have to start, you know, from the middle and fan out. And when there, there, mm. there is absolutely no connection that you can find between Mr. Mm. McCullough and your suspects, it makes it it's it becomes a very difficult situation. I know that the police did have a description of the of the the uh, pickup truck that was that that was the uh, the 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 get getaway um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, vehicle. Yeah. Um, and so I think that they worked from there and were able to start piecing together what happened. But this was a long process. This was not a not you know a usual police investigation that you see on homicides because you know in most cases in homicides there is connection to the victim sure yeah you really so ali fajir was arrested um almost four years later and he yeah. was given a bail house arrest bail is that a, is that normal for someone who's been accused of, of manslaughter well he wasn't convicted of manslaughter at that well i guess he had pled guilty I should okay. say he had a very limited, extremely limited criminal record. Mm. Um, and the argument was made by the defense was, look, I, I, it's, you know, he needs to get his affairs in order. So he's, he's looking at a lengthy sentence. Uh, and there was a pitch made that, you know, he's he's come. He, he's here in court. He he has sureties. He had some some good sureties and, and that that were that were pledging money. Um, and they made a pitch to uh, Justice Thomas and said, you can put an electronic bracelet on him, but he wants to get his, his affairs in order. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I was there for that hearing. And I can recall that Justice Thomas, you know, was a bit hesitant on it. Um, the uh, Crown, uh, you know, there, there was a pushback on the side of the Crown to say no, um, because there really wasn't a really good argument to say, you know, you know, there there was no suggestion that he was a flight risk. Mm. So um, he he was given house arrest bail, which is the strictest form of bail, and he had an electronic bracelet put on his on his ankle. Right, and that should have been sufficient. And I can remember he was warned that if you don't turn up for your son, they, they all bets are off here. Right, deals are gone. Yeah, and sure enough, we got to the end of January, and I can remember that morning. Someone saying to me as I went into court, he's not here and he's not coming. And and uh, um, there had the crown had been told that the bracelet had been found uh, oh, wow. cut off. So right. and it was kind of the interesting part to me was uh, these the electronic bracelets are monitored by the company that that supplies them and um, they can tell when it's been cut off. So. It uh, they got an alert that the bracelet had been tampered with, the strap had been tampered with. Okay, it, it is a GPS monitor, so they knew where it was. Right, and they called the Toronto police, and the Toronto police found it cut off, and Mr. Fisher was gone. And that was the day before his sentencing. So that's correct. And that was in 2020, and so then he was he was on the lam for three years. He was gone. He was gone. Nobody knew where he was. And you, know, how, you know, I think you and I both know that a couple of things happened in 2020 that would uh, yes. curtail a lot of things too, right? I mean, a pandemic was, is a probably a good time to try and disappear. Exactly. Right? So, you know, he disappeared at the end of January of 2020, and um, you know, March 16th, 17th of 2020, we were all locked down. Wow. So our priority shifted a bit. So he's been found now uh, in Windsor. When was he found and, and, and who found him? He was arrested, I believe it was last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding from the news release from the Windsor police is that 
that they were conducting a an investigation into fentanyl trafficking. Um, uh, Mr. Fajir was arrested uh, in a parked car okay. by what's called the Rope Squad. The, OP, the Rope Squad is a, is a special unit um, made up of officers, not just from the OPP, but many police services. And their job is to basically track down people who um, have abs- who have ab- absconded, right? Like that's okay. repeat. It's a repeat offender. And I'm sorry, I don't know the act. So they must have anyway. known. They knew his name because they were they were um, investigating a fentanyl trafficking. Um, right, and there was. And remember, there is a Canada wide warrant out for him. There was a warrant, point, yeah, right? yeah, for him. So they found him. Uh, uh, he was arrested. Uh, the press release from the Windsor Police said that they did find drugs in the car. Mm-hmm. plus some uh, drug paraphernalia scales um, and a thousand bucks in, in, in cash. Okay. Uh, and he was in, Mr. Fajir was charged with uh, possession for the purpose of trafficking. So though that charge is now outstanding, but in the meantime, um, the word was, the word got back to London that we got him. He was transported back to London and he made his first court appearance last Thursday in London. And he faces a new charge of failing to comply with with the court order, mm-hmm. and uh, what will happen now? And I I am assuming that I will find out tomorrow when he makes his next court appearance that mm-hmm. there is a new sentencing date for him in front of Justice Bruce Thomas. Sure, yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll wait to see what happens on that for sure. But I I want to talk about Mary Willer a little bit, um, the partner of Mark McCullough, who who was the man who was shot. How has she been coping? Ha- have you been in touch with her at all over the last eight years since her husband passed away or her partner passed away and there was essentially no justice? Well, not not as much as there could have been because uh, Mr. Fajir took off. Well, I, I, I don't know Ms. Willer except for the conversation I had with her last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say I think she was in the courtroom for the guilty plea and the sentencing. I, I know that that Mr. McCullough's parents were there. Mm. Um, what was what has stuck with me from that hearing was uh, the sense of frustration on the part of the Crown and, and, and the defense and the judge that Mr. Fajir was gone. And a promise by the judge to that family that said, saying that I can't sentence him right now. And I, I understand that you're frustrated and I can't sentence him right now, but he said, I will. Mm-hmm. And that was that promise will be kept. Um, but last week, I mean, remember that's more than three years ago. Sure. Uh, uh, I was. Well, we contacted Ms. Willer by phone. Um, I had a brief conversation with her. She has. She said that she was relieved. You could sense that she was very relieved. Yeah. She said it was good news. Um, she said she's had lots of support from her family, and she has recently found a new partner, and that's okay. been supportive. Right. And um, she is grateful that he's back in custody, as she well should be. Sure. Um, what a long yes. trauma for her to to have to endure all that waiting. Sure. And but, you know, the other thing is now she will, you know, part of that trauma will be re- revisited and revisited sure. once went at the sentencing as well. I I I suspect. But right. You know, it has been eight years and, you know, you know, she is no longer living in that neighborhood. Um, her life, as we know, as time marches on, you take new directions and new and do new things and, and have new experiences. And and I think as much as she is appreciative that this is finally coming to uh, to 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 the end on the mm-hmm. criminal justice side. I mean, you know, I think her life has moved on. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and and you'd have to. So I'm glad to hear she's she's doing OK. And um... well, she sounded pretty good. Yeah, she good. sounded fine. I am curious. My my curiosity is someone who hangs out with the courts is I am wondering what kind of sentence Mr. Fajir is facing. And and, you know, I don't know what kind of deal was in place, but certainly now that all bets are off. And sure. You know, three years of freedom when. You should have been in custody, I think, is going to, that has to be taken. he'll have a harsher, a harsher sentence than he would have had, had he not yeah, taken off. I would off. think so. I yeah. would think so. And, you know, like, I mean, it is, it is a manslaughter and uh, uh, those sentences, they can, 
they run the gamut. But uh, you know, we'll we'll see what the what what the crown su suggests in this. What they're what they're seeking now. So yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, Jane, thank you so much. Mr. Fajir is in court uh, June 1st, which is the day that this podcast comes out. And so we will wait to hear your and see your reporting on this at lfpress.com and see what the next steps are. Thank you so much. No problem, Rachel. Thanks for having me.